This is not about the goddamn video game. All right? Okay, everybody, this motion picture is basically kind of like a steaming pile of shit, but it doesn't stop it from being great. That's why we're taking a look back at 1977's Grand Theft Auto. Before we go any further, as you know, to the trailer. I'm Ron Howard. This is Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto is a love story. With cars. And I love him, and that's why we're going to Las Vegas to get married. I want my Rolls Royce. This Rolls Royce isn't exactly mine. Want to pull over and fool around a little? Also, it's a comedy. Yeah! With car crashes. But I am a superior driver! And you know how reckless these young people can be. Couldn't call with Sam and I have done race. I know what I'm calling. Yeah, get down! Jimmy, I got something hot. I'm gonna go with this. Put me on the air now. Break into the record. Her parents will pay big bucks to anyone who can stop them. You're just hovering up there like a lousy vulture, hoping for a wreck. Well, if you have it, I'm going to report it. In the course of this calamitous chase of the chapel, Ron's caused the crashing of a $40,000 Rolls Royce, three Cadillac, Mercedes Benz, Porsche, seven cop cars, four trucks, a very cherry van, a lot of Lincolns, lowriders, 33 screaming street machines. And Ron wrestles his red hot rolls up on two wheels into a spectacular chicky run with a whirly bird. Don't worry, they'll pull off! Don't worry, they'll pull off! They're gonna crash! Look out, Vegas. We're coming in. Grand Theft Auto. Directed by and starring Ron Howard. Well, hell. Okay, this motion picture is directed by legendary filmmaker Ron Howard. I mean, come on, man. Everybody's got to start someplace. And this is where he started. Anyway, as always, he's done a legendary bunch of stuff. And we're going to name a few of them now, because that's what we always do. We're talking Apollo 13. We're talking Ransom and Backdraft and Parenthood and Willow and Cocoon and Splash. Uh, a Beautiful Mind and Cinderella Man and uh, of course one of my true favorites of all times which we will review at some point or another because it's just freaking great Night Shift with Henry Winkler Boom! Love that motion picture. Anyway, he directed this first time out the gate working with the whole Corman type situation whatever Ron Howard BAM! Okay, starting is Sam well, it's Ron Howard again, and it shouldn't be any kind of a big surprise. I mean, come on, up until the point where he abandoned being in front of the camera to be behind the camera, he was in front of the camera a lot, starting from when he was just a little kid. Now, come on, we all know what we're going to remember him mostly as. He will always be Richie Cunningham on Happy Days. Point blank, that's it. Always will be forever. But he was all this stuff, Daniel Boone and Lassie and Route 66, The Great Adventure, uh, of course, the Andy Griffith show, and he was in other movies like uh, Eat My Dust and uh, uh, American Graffiti and The Shootist. So he had a really good acting career going before he said, hey, I want to be a director. And he showed that's where his talent really lied, you know? Not that he was a good actor, but it is what it is. Let's keep going. Okay, playing Paula was Nancy Morgan. Now, she was in stuff like, you know, uh, she was in Americathon, she was in Lucky Luke, uh, the Nest, and she was on TV and stuff like, you know, The Paper Chase and Different Strokes and Romance Theater, Shazam, Medical Center, The Love Boat. She was in a whole bunch of shit, on a bunch of whole bunch of shit. Anyway, she was around. You might recognize her face. Ah, maybe. Anyway, let's keep going. Okay, playing the preacher was Ho Howell. Now, he is truly one of my favorites, cause just because of the genre of movies that I love. He was in so much stuff where you know his face, you would never know his name nine times out of ten. 
but you'll know his face. He was in one of my all-time favorites, Kingdom of the Spiders. He was in other stuff like Pushing Up Daisies, uh, Avenging Angel, Alienator, Teenage Exorcist. Uh, he was on TV like Quincy and Fantasy Island and The Greatest American Hero and uh, The Dukes of Hazard and Harper Valley PTA. And he was in another one of my all-time favorites, which uh, I... I think I've actually... Re no, I haven't reviewed on this channel yet. Wait, did I? Did I not? I can't remember. There's been too many. But he was in Humanoids of the Deep with uh, Doug McClure for a while. Uh, uh, he's just been in everything popped up everywhere. you got to love the guy. As soon as you see the face, you're like, motherfucker, I know that guy. Well, yeah. Okay, playing Vivian Hedgeworth was Marion Ross. Now, come on, for the love of God. We all know. I mean, Ron Howard, his first few movies, just seems like he just kept going and uh, abducting the cast from Happy Days. I mean, he had Henry Winkler over there Night Shift, and he had Marion Ross in this. And, of course, she's Mrs. Cunningham from Happy Days. You all know her. You all love her. She was America's mom for years and years and years. Mrs. C. But, obviously, she's been in other stuff. She was in stuff like Hotel and Glitter and Sister Kate and MacGyver. Uh, she's popped up on The 70s Show and Gilmore Girls and... Uh, the Drew Carey Show and uh, Handy Mandy and a bunch. Of sh I mean, she's just been around. You know, she's just been around, always around, still alive, still going. I think. And God bless her for it, Mrs. C. Woo we all love you. Yeah. Playing Curly Q Brown was Don Steele. Now, Don Steele is an icon for two movies. This, in my mind, anyway. And Death Race 2000, which will be coming up. Oh, you damn well know I'm reviewing that. Anyway, he was really a radio DJ. Mostly known for being a radio DJ. Yes, he popped up in other movies. Yeah, he was in Death Race 2000. Yeah, he popped up in uh, Rock and Roll High School and Nowhere to Run and uh, uh, Eating Raul. And, and he did, like, you know, TV work and voice work. And I think his voice was even... He was like the radio voice in the background of the Gremlins and shit. As soon as I was in the movie theater watching the Gremlins, I'm like, oh, my fucking God, you got to be kidding me. Don Steele. Anyway, we know the voice. And this one, you get to see the face a whole lot, just like you did when he was traipsing around Death Race 2000. Don Steele, gotta love him. All there is to it. Bam. Okay, playing Colin Hedgeworth was Paul Link. Now, he popped up in a bunch of shit back in the day. I mean, he was on a lot of TV and a lot of low-budget movies, so of course I would know who he is. It's what I do. Anyway, he was in Motel Hell. He was in Big Bad Mama and Parenthood. And he was on tons of TV shows like Chips and Mash and Happy Days. Hey, there was that again. Knott's Landing and St. Elsewhere and uh, 21 Jump Street and uh, Quantum Leap. So he was around, did a bunch of work, is what it is. He was in this, being ridiculous and over the top and being very effective at it. Bam, let's keep going. Okay, play Mr. Power with Barry Cahill. Now, he had a really, 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 really long television career. Movies, yeah. But TV, he was in a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, he was in stuff like... Perry Mason, Have Gun, Will Travel, Ben Casey, The Fugitive, uh, 12 O'Clock High, Wild Wild West, uh, Adam 12, Gunsmoke, Ironsides. So he, he was in a bunch of stuff. You know, it was just one of those kind of guys working his way around town. It was his living. Never became like a big star, but he was in this. Okay, and play Mrs. Powers was Elizabeth. Elizabeth, pardon me, Rogers. Now, she was in stuff like, you know, Bittersweet Love and one of my all-time fucking classic favorites that we will get to someday, which was the van. How could you not love van? I mean, you're talking custom conversion vans, titties. It was a great motion picture. But she mostly did television work, really. She was in a lot of TV shows, just like all these other people. She was in stuff like The Waltons, Gunsmoke, Medical Center, Mannix, Bonanza, and Star Trek, and just to name a few. But that's what she did, and that's who she was, and that's her kind of legacy to the game. But, God, it doesn't matter anymore. Come on, I've named so many of these people. Let's just get to the goddamn story. All right, folks, here's the story. It's been done many times. You've heard it all before. There's a girl named Paula. She's rich, and her parents are rich. But she falls in love with a boy named Sam. He's poor, is what it is. Her parents don't want her with a poor guy. They want her with... A rich guy. And this guy happens to be a guy named Collins. Now, he's a dweeb, dork, geek, whatever. She doesn't love him. She wants to be with Sam. So, she runs away with Sam. And she runs away with Sam in her parents' very, very expensive Rolls Royce. Well, Dad puts out a reward to get his Rolls Royce back. And his daughter. And before you know it, everybody is chasing these kids down. 
Well, they're also being chased by her ex-jilted kind of fiancé, whatever you want to call him, Collins, who's running around in a polo suit, stealing every automobile in town, trying to get her back. Along the way, they call up the radio station, kind of clear things up, and they become semi-folk heroes at that point, running from their rich, oppressive parents. Well, hers anyway. Running off because they love each other, money be damned, stealing rich cars, it doesn't matter. There are modern-day I don't know, I hate to say Bonnie and Clyde, because those fucking people were evil. But anyway, they are what they are, and they did what they did, and that's the whole freaking story. Told you it was simple, told you you've heard it before, whether it was Titanic, to this, to that, to that, to that, that doesn't matter. This is what this motion picture is. With cars! Okay, I'm going to tell you why this motion picture works. And it's kind of weird saying it works because it's really kind of like a clunky shit movie. But it's enjoyable. It's fun. For his first time behind the camera, Ron Howard did a pretty good job. There's parts of it that look like it should have been on television. Some of the camera angles he's using look like it was right out of, like, you know, the rookies or some goofy shit like that. And some of it just was really low budget. You could tell they were like, okay, we're, we got bigger dreams, but we're trying to bring it in at a lower budget. The car crashes are what they were. The car chases are what they were. You've all seen the same shit before, and you've all seen it bigger, and you've all seen it better. But it's still enjoyable. It's still fun. It's completely camp. And that's what makes the movie work. If they tried to do this movie like it was serious, you'd be like, this is the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. But this movie is a farce. The characters are farcical. The characters are campy. The whole thing over the top is just ridiculous. And then you throw in, like, you know, the preacher cow character with uh, Hulk Howell, and then you throw in Don Steele as Curly Q, and they really make the movie more interesting and more fun. Those are the kind of characters, I think, that, that kind of push this thing into being, like, even better than if they weren't in it, believe me. I think those two guys just really knocked this thing up a notch. So, in closing, is Grand Theft Auto going to stick in your mind as one of the greatest motion pictures of all times? No. Are you going to see anything in here that you haven't seen before or since a hundred million other times? No. Were there, other car, were there other car movies where the crashes were bigger and the chases were wilder? Yeah. This movie is completely devoid of any, like, you know, hot nudity or anything like that. So if you're into grunge and grindhouse like I am for that, you're not going to like this. But all that being said, it's fun. It's enjoyable. It's lighthearted. There's just an hour and a half spent being easily amused by a very ditzy, goofy, happy little flick. Nothing to think about. Nothing to pontificate about. It's just pure, unadulterated entertainment. Mindless, Silly, stupid, over-the-top, mindless entertainment. And you know what? Sometimes that shit ain't bad. All right, folks. Everybody have a good one. Catch you soon. Be good to each other. Take care of one another. Go watch some movies, even the ones that I haven't told you about. Just enjoy it.